All right, you're still watching Ways World Lupus Day, established to take um, place on the 10th of May every year by the World Lupus Federation. Um, was meant to unite lupus group around the world during lupus awareness month and um, call attention to the impact that the disease has on um, the more than 5 million people globally affected by lupus. Now this year, May 10th, for World Lupus Day, the World Lupus Federation is urging the public, the gen um, global public, including those living with lupus, their friends and family members to raise awareness, share facts about the disease, on social media in their uh what's it called communities do we know what lupus is so mm -hmm. i hear is an inflammatory disease that uh, is when the immune system like attacks its own tissues mm. so it's um i know it can affect the joints uh the kidneys blood vessels blood sorry blood cells mm. um, skin Brain, wow. heart, mouth. Yeah, this, this is deadly. Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm I not wish we sure could actually get a doctor to, to actually help us break it down and let's even see, you know, is um, how prevalent it, it is, especially in our own climb, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's, uh, be it's nice a lot. To know. Yeah, I can see that the symptoms vary from fatigue, joint pain, rash, fever. So it's, but it'll be nice, yes, to actually have someone put us through. Fatigue. Joint pain. <laughs> it's ringing bells in your head. No, 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 it's not the same thing. But I, I would just say that this is another call for P, um, for individuals to be conscious of their health. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to wait till you're way older or you get past 40, 50 before you start caring about your health. It's, it's very, very important for us as individuals to go for regular medical checkups Check so up. that when you, you can, you know, actually discover some of these things early, early enough. enough for you to be able to treat it for the, for the ones that can be treated and for you to be able to, you know, manage for those ones that cannot, you know, that would just need you to manage it. For the rest of your life, yes. absolutely. All right, so let me um, get easy. What did you find for us in the news? Okay, in the news today, what caught my attention was something good. I didn't want to take anything on politics. I didn't want to take anything that had to do with, you know, the transitioning of the government. So I, I, you know, went browsing and I saw something on a teenager called Favor Aga. Favor Aga is a young man who is a Gregorian. He, he actually did something so interesting. He's a teenager, he's about 15 years of age, and he smashed his UTME with the highest score in physics and chemistry in Lagos State with an aggregate score of 355. That is almost 400, actually. Let me just give you a total breakdown of what he actually scored. You know, he uh, scored 94 in math, 98 in physics, 98 in chemistry, and, nine, and 65 in English. Now, you know, people like these, they don't really know English. But No, don't say that. Too. Yeah. Um, no. you see, don't say that. No. no. Okay, no. Let me let me break it down. So I'm my telling son, you. I'm telling you. Wait <laughs> now. Calm down. I have results. Miss M, I get jam results. I just don't want to talk about it in public. My son had a very fantastic score in jam. He had 98 in math. He had, um, I think, 97 in one other subject. Every single student, they, they are all complaining. So even me, Seth, now I'm looking for jam official. I want to ask them. What happened to English in jam? Because guess what? Every student that made fantastic scores, you know, scoring 300 and uh, something, 340, 350, most of them, what brought their scores down was English language. Was English. And I'm saying that it's, it's impossible for somebody to do excellently well in all of this subject and all of a sudden 60. This is somebody that has never gotten 60 or 70 in his, um, what's it called, regular school work right yeah. go and check his history yeah. in school is always night is in the 90s when it comes to english so how come jam is just giving all the students 60 something in english it's not possible 
So we have to ask Jam what happened because I, I don't would, I don't I get the result. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't generalize it basically, but what I would say is that there is something actually wrong with the way we actually teach English in Nigeria. I have to tell you this because what we do is we tell them to do it. We don't actually put them into a system where they actually put it into practice. And when you're actually practicing it, some people are like Osayuame will now start teasing you for saying it right. No, no, no. <laughs> don't say <laughs> that. <laughs> so, okay, now. So when we, so when for we a child, no, wait, now. I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, you see, you, see, when you, you, want to, you are looking for my trouble this night, too. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> when you write it, basically, when you write it, there is a there is a particular style of writing. You know this, you, you know, know Jam is objective. That yeah, Jam is actually oh. objective. But you oh, see, Jam is objective. Mostly, for a child mostly. that wrote IELTS and got a, um, what's it called, an 8.59, that child is not an okay. average English. It's, an adv it's, it's a fantastic English advanced, student. Do you understand? So, you cannot tell me that um, Jam English is uh, is tougher than the IELTS exams that they write. You do listening skills, you do comprehension, you do what's it called? Um, um, what did they call the writing and the all of that? You can't, you can't right complain. Right. So we you need to ask Jam, right? Because it's because we don't ask questions. When I saw the result, all his classmates, everybody 60 something. Why? You're getting 90 something, 90 something, 90 something. You just get to English 60 something. Look at this boy's result, the same thing. It doesn't 65. make sense. To me. Yeah, I was about so to say. So I actually really wanted to write to Jam, but because he's not using the result, that's why I just I didn't bother. I it doesn't make any question. sense. Because ah. it's, it's, it's funny for you to have high scores ah. in physics, chemistry, and then you have a 65. Haba. So that's like in a little English. above average. That's quite okay. Well, that's quite strange. I will own up to it because I'm not Jam, but however. <laughs> The reason I took the story is because we have glorified individuals who haven't, you know, uh, performed remarkably intelligently in the education within the education field, but we have given them uh, in what do you call them now. We have given them an avenue where people who in the society today, people who do not have the know-how are actually being glorified or giving that recognition. Here we have a young man who is has a promising future. If the government really wants to work hand in hand with this young man, who is practically a genius, if I must say, it is high time that the Lagos State government also acknowledges individuals or young um, um, teenagers who perform very well in the exams and are giving that recognition to fly high or giving a scholarship of some sort so that they can be encouraged in the society that okay. they find themselves. On that so note. It not be like a situation <laughs> where we still we look for say, them. oh, Nigeria has <laughs> failed us again. That is the sole reason Absolutely. why I'm taking this Absolutely. You're story. taking the story. I get yeah. you. We should always celebrate, you know, yeah, competence and all of that. NG. Well, but we'll still look for jam. <laughs> <laughs> so, unlike EC, I'm still in, within the politics uh, environment. Hmm. So, uh, my story is about the president elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who on Wednesday left Nigeria for Europe on a walking visit two weeks after returning to the country from a trip to London, Saudi Arabia, and Paris. In a statement signed by his uh, media aide, Tunde Rahman, Tinubu would use this opportunity, the opportunity of the trip, to fine tune the transition plans and programs and his policy options with some of his key aides without unnecessary pressures and distractions. So he's supposed to en engage investors and other key allies uh, with the goal of marketing investment opportunities for Nigeria mm -hmm. and his administration's readiness to enable a business-friendly climate through policies and regulations. Mm. Um, and for me, this was... Um, I think what caught my attention about this story was is actually the comment section of you know, what people had to say is, it's funny how Nigerians always have a comment for anything that happens, apart from things that affect them directly. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, we always have a comment for everything. You know, there was someone who went on all out, he's a lawyer, and he went all out to say that at this point in time, he's of the opinion that, um, you know, that Tinubu, his next 
line of action should be declaring his assets and, you know, uh, he, swearing his oath of allegiance and all that and all that, rather than traveling and touring the country, that he should just tell us that he's not feeling well and he's going for another medical, you know, and this is just Nigerians, you know, backlash of elections and everything that it's has happened. It's not that. You, you know, one bit, one's beaten, one's shy. That's where we are. Because we are just coming out from a presidency that spent practically nine months, you know, in the UK. In the, yeah. You know, yeah. with um, go, uh, government funds. So it doesn't make any sense for us to, you know, um, have okay. another leader that would be going on regular health checks abroad. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. But you see, it's Nigeria matter. It will be well. <laughs> so um, Pastor E. Adigboe had said that Tinubu would prosper um, um, that Tinubu would prosper in no Nigeria would prosper in Tinubu's hands if God helps him. Um, of course he had mentioned this during uh, I think a service or something, you know, um, a monthly Thanksgiving at um, Lagos State, right? He, I think the what's it called? The Butemeta whatever. So he prayed for the incoming government. So of course, Nigerians now, like you rightly said, we know they, <laughs> we are not, we are not spare anything that has to do with the youth are really angry. So they came out and they, there was a lot of backlash on um, the general overseer. So Peter Obi has come out, you know, to condemn all the social media attacks on Adeboe. Um, he said that um, the obedience are law abiding citizens, noting that the opposition parties deploy such method to gain undue advantage and create confusion and bad blood. So Obi made this known in a statement on Twitter. He said the use of um, um, subterfuge, I think that's the word, hmm. subterfuge by people masquerading as obedience to abuse and insult eminent personalities like most reverend Pastor E. Adeboe or anyone else is not is most unacceptable. So obedience are very largely um, law-abiding citizens. While the difference of opinion are normal, calculated efforts to create ethnic or religious um, chaos in the name of politics should in any way not be tolerated. So, I mean, he is really coming out, which is good, because again, you know, I've heard this thing in different quarters. Everybody wants to, once there's an attack on any word, they say, I want obedience. Mm. And they've come again. Yeah, they push it's, I everything. mean, of course, everybody now, they're just pushing it. If you come against any person in leadership or um, a prominent person, they just put it Turn under the guise of oh, these obedient people. They are so stubborn. They are this, they are that. So it's good that he's, he's the one coming out to condemn it so that, you know, everybody will, would... Um, at least take a chill pill. Yeah. On that note, let's take a break. When we come back from the break, we will discuss communication. Stay with us. We'll be right back.